I wanted to make a follow-up video to my gravity flyer. There was a lot of questions online on how things work and if a certain thing would work or not. So I just wanted to go ahead and make another video to show you some of those things and answer your questions a little better with some visual aids. All right, here we go, guys. Have fun. I wanted to show you my first time hooking my gravity flyer to high voltage. It actually sparked over on every bolt that there was, hooking every plate together. So you'll see that in the video. You'll see the sparks. It was a complete failure. This is why you'll see plastic bolts on my gravity flyer. I had some comments on the videos told me to balance my plates. Uh, just so you know, this is one of the later videos that I did where I actually did balance my plates. I put it in the last video. Apparently I didn't put it in there well enough. No matter what I do, there's going to be vibration because of the weight. This thing doesn't weigh 15 pounds. It weighs 3 pounds. The weight of those magnets spinning is always going to make it vibrate just a little bit. It's a weight ratio thing. I put bigger magnets on. Okay. I have neodymium 52s on here. Okay. They're about an inch and a half, I would say. Maybe about an inch and a quarter, more like it. But it's always going to have a little wobble. I can't take that out. Now, did I get the plates to line up? Yes, I did. Did I grind them out? Yes, I did. Did I run the motor and let it file out? Yes, I did. And then I came back and I cleaned up the filings. So just so you, you know, in, in everything, I did do that. I didn't do it halfway. I did it all the way, and I fixed it. So just in case you're wondering, a lot of the tests I do, I do it unbalanced. Okay, just in case you wanted to know, I want to know different reactions. If everybody runs it the same way, how are you going to get a different reaction? Well, you have to run it in a different way than everybody else so that you can get your own understanding of how things work. So anyway, that's it. Just want to clear that up for you. I did balance it as best as it's ever going to get balanced. It's a weight ratio thing because this right here, this plate, probably about one third of the weight of the whole thing. So just so you understand that. Here's my original gravity flyer. It weighed about 15 pounds. As you can see, it doesn't shake around at all. And it's uh, in unison, a little crooked on the plates, but uh, well balanced. As you can see, here's my gravity flyer. It's in balance. It's not shaking all over the place. I turned down the motor speed to where it's normal again. Okay, this right here are my magnets on my gravity flyer. The neodymium 52s. And they demagnetize when you hit them with high voltage. So I just wanted to show you why. This is a video of a guy making magnets, the neodymium 52s. Here's what he does. He takes them, he rolls them in some paper, and he puts them in this center core here. Okay. Just watch on this side when he comes up with the voltage, what it is right here so it's gonna set it you're gonna find less than one amp okay and here we go right around 3,000 volts and less than an amp to an amp is what made the magnets. And that's it. Why is that important? Because we're putting more than that in to our gravity flyer on this disc. So they demagnetize. All this is is a piece of heavy weight being spun. After you run too much voltage on it, these magnets become useless. There is no field anymore. Usually you get a field, and a magnet field, when you spin something, will go out in a spear all the way around it, okay, every direction, and it'll go and it'll break out, obviously, three quarters from it. You get the, the best, then it goes way worse right here, and then almost nothing out here. There's one more field, but it's not something that you generally pick up on your multimeter, but that's what happens it demagnetizes so if you say put better magnets in not gonna work more voltage in why put the magnets in 
This is a video I did a while back on rotating a magnet core. Uh, it has four neodymium magnets in it, each two inches long, half inch by half inch wide. And it also uh, rotates at about 7,800 RPM. And you'll see the distances from one to the next and the values of it and see how far the thing actually goes. Uh, the one thing I didn't show in this is the energy also has top and bottom, so it'll go in a sphere shape when it uh, comes out, not just uh, long one way to the other, but a spherical shape. This right here is my paper lifter experiment. I found a guy online who did this. I thought it was very interesting, and it really comes into how you use different things in a gravity flyer. So please check this out. Uh, here we go. I'm going to hit play. What happens is there's voltage on top, voltage on bottom. Everything always goes from small to big when it has to do with voltage. Okay? If you want any kind of ion flow on it, that's the way it works. You see it lift? There you go. You basically hit the voltage and it goes from the small end to the big end. Now, you're probably wondering, can I do it in reverse? And the answer is no. So here it is, we put voltage on it. Big end's here, small end's here. What's gonna happen on this? Unfortunately, you'll see me move it right here, and it sucks right back down. And again, sucks right back down. I didn't show this on any of my videos. So just, please just understand this. This is some of the testing that I do. I wanted to know if I have a plate on the top and a plate on the bottom and then a small one again, which way is it working now if I do the voltage? Okay. Well, it's going back to the center no matter what. It always likes the bigger plate always goes from small to big no matter how you do it just like in your average lifter you put a wire up there and then you hit the voltage it goes to the big plate okay always always it does this so it's something that you should understand for your gravity flyer if you're going to build it okay the reason i wanted to show this lifter experiment is because when you go from a small plate to a big plate to a small plate you're actually negating your lift you have force of pressure with voltage from a small plate to a big plate and it'll force it down into the ground however when you put the small plate again on bottom now the pressure is all in the center so you're not putting any force to one side or the other or excuse me top or the bottom it's basically putting all the force in the center it means that you're not going to have any lift this is my ion thruster right here I know it's not part of the gravity flyer, but I wanted to put it out there because people ask me, what if you took the center of the gravity flyer out and you put in this right here, okay? This is your ion thruster. Basically long pieces of metal, just hollow aluminum, okay, is what it is. The top part you see here, the wires, that's on the top part. It goes from small to big, okay, just like it always flows. It flows right down okay so here's another picture of it you'll get a nice glow at night put it in at night it makes a nice glow it will not do glow during the day uh, it will make a lot of sound when you get this top plate and the bottom plate here and you get them close enough I usually tap on the top until I get them to the right sound and I know exactly where it is okay It'll make a high pitching uh, like snakes, you know, like a snake, okay? Make that sound, and you'll get this right here, okay? Any further apart, it won't develop. So here's another one that you can see it at night. It makes a real gorgeous glow. Two millimeters per second is all you're getting out of it, okay? You can multiply it by adding multiple ones, but the weight takes you down on the amount that it'll actually get to. You could never achieve enough uh, wind to reduce the weight. The weight's always going to be greater. If you make this at a half a pound, you would have to probably go maybe one 
eighteenth of a pound to even get anywhere close to a lift and we don't have anything that's that light and weight to make it so it'll never work just so you understand this is the process I did build it I did figure it out it just won't work for a gravity flyer in case you were interested and want to know more about the ion thruster here I do a video on it I'll link it in the description I also will link in the description a uh, link to Thingiverse where you can download the STLs and print this thing out yourself okay I just wanted to show you guys this this is uh, right here my plate with my magnets on it for my gravity flyer here it is on the video I'm going to show you right here I just want you to notice something it's just running I'm holding the motor in my hand I'm moving it around but it just makes a little wobble and it likes to stay right where it is I constantly tell people that all these things do is balance and this is why weighted object spinning around likes to hold itself where it is regardless of the weight of it so if you turn to the side it stays where it is if you move it up it stays where it is anywhere I move it it'll wiggle just a little bit then it'll want to stay exactly there so if you ever see a UFO on the side and you wonder why it can stay there rotation is balance it is not lift it is balance and this right here take any motor you got put the plate on it put the weighted magnets on it and you'll see exactly what I'm looking at this is one of the tests I did there's a video on this you can watch it if you want simple understanding of what this actually is versus what you may think it is this is all it is why do I keep saying on some of my videos that uh, I want sound out of this because I understand that the center plate has to resonate and I understand that you must have sound waves going like this out of the center plate and if you don't have that this whole process is completely useless the center plate on this is not going to give you that that's why it's the wrong material if you ever hear me say it wrong material because it doesn't resonate well and I'll show you another video here uh, later on where, where I explain the resonance of it with a tuning fork all right I want to show you guys out there on the resonating of the two plates here again you can see it's two plates all I did was hammer them together here is the seam line right here you can see it right by my thumb okay now you're gonna have to resonate this okay here's the one it resonates in this is a I don't know if you see that can you hear it you hear it go right to the plate try it again there it is you hear it right there is really good if we put it in D you can you hear it not really put it in B Not really. A. Probably asking yourself, is it just vibrating? And that's what we're getting. A little bit. But not like that. You can hear it this right here is another test I've done for my gravity flyer as you can see I removed the center plate from it again we're just trying to see how much wind is actually in it so you can see right here you can see it come off okay flows around and through there's not enough for lift there maybe get you a little breeze okay but it's not enough for lift that's all there is in this thing okay no matter high voltage or not that's all the wind you're getting I want to thank you all for watching my video I hope you uh, learned some things hope you got some more questions for me so we can make another video and figure it out together uh, I am changing my gravity flyer I will not keep it in this configuration uh, I've learned a lot more from that I did a UFO 
theory video and it kind of tells you where I'm going from here and I'll make another follow-up video to that but anyway I just want to show you guys this stuff hopefully we all learn together if you're sad that I didn't bring out my fishing rod and bring up my gravity flyer with that I'm sorry I just don't do that kind of thing okay anyway if you like it give me a like give me a subscribe talk back with me I listen to every comment and I try to uh, address it and then I try to do a follow-up video to show you what's going on so if you enjoyed everything go ahead and subscribe and we'll get through this and we'll see if we can't make something that lifts thanks guys Here's a little bonus footage for those who stuck around to the end of the video. This right here is a hieroglyph. Uh, on the bottom right, they commonly refer to this as DNA. I'm going to tell you it's a sound wave. In between, you'll see little uh, spots right there. Those are actually uh, the styrofoam balls you would see in the levitation experiment. You look right up above it, you'll see a UFO looking thing uh, with little people in it. And right under it, you'll see a little wave. It'll be a uh, sound wave right there. That's how we generally see a sound wave. You don't really understand. It looks more like DNA, but just in a general understanding. So that now you can see what I'm looking at uh, when I look at these experiments and how I would put them towards ancient history and if they knew. Take a look right here. This is a uh, flying saucer that a fighter pilot uh, saw. Here is a picture of a uh, UFO. I just want to notice the point on it. We're making these things right here to make them look just like the UFOs. But that point, remember I said always in this video, small to big, small to big. That's how they work. They go right through sound, right through the sound wave, small to big, every time. So if you're watching this, it's really cool. There's some stuff in ancient history. Did they know before us? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They knew. They knew a lot more than we did. And only now that we're discovering the experiments to get us there are we finally starting to understand what they did. And every little piece of the onion we peel back, we're going to find some more. And you're going to relate it to all these hieroglyphs. And they're all going to show a picture. And when you finally see it, it's going to be amazing. So, anyway, that's it. A little bonus footage for you there. A little more understanding. Hopefully you enjoyed it.